I'm Jenny Russell. Welcome to Her Health and Happiness right here on UK Health Radio, the world's leading radio station for all things health, available on podcast platforms, Apple, Google, Android, whichever way you get your podcast, we are here to assist you in every area of your health. How are you doing? I'm up here dancing and I hope, like me, you too remember that you are blessed and highly favoured, a magnet for miracles, the solution to somebody's problem and the answer to someone's prayer. Her Health and Happiness is a show dedicated to all aspects of female intimate health and the whole person. Now it's me this week. I've got some wonderful interviews lined up from this afternoon right through to the end of the week. So we'll have a great show with guests next week. But I wanted to talk really about... I discovered something. I went on another course the other day and it was amazing. And I want to just talk about female energy, male energy... And actually recognising where we are and what it is we're attracting into our life. I'm doing a 21 day abundance challenge and it's been, it's been, I'm on day three, we're on day three and it's really, really great. It's great. And today's mantra is about allowing myself to focus on what I want to attract into my life. I want to just talk about a few things and just really open our minds up to what is actually possible because I think the many times we focus on things that are well the bible says in today's reading as well the bible says whatever is pure whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is just whatever is praiseworthy you know meditate on these things and I think in today's climate with the cost of living crisis and the war in Ukraine and the this and the that and the you know, and all these things happening and, you know, the inflation rates and of course mortgages going up, it's, it is very hard to focus on what is noble, what is pure, what is praiseworthy, what is true. And that's, that, that's the problem. And a lot of the times, you know, the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, not yet seen. So really, literally, you know, our faith is in the things that we want to experience but they haven't come to fruition yet, so we can't experience them. So, and I think the best way to really say that, whether you're a believer, yes or no, if you're a person that has booked your holiday for six months' time or next year, or, you know, you're planning your wedding, your engagement, all those things, that is, faith is the substance of things hoped for, not yet seen. So the experience is what you're booking. You're booking to have an experience in the future, You're not saying to yourself, oh, I'm not sure if I should book that holiday because this might happen, that might happen. You don't focus on what's going to go wrong. You just, you book it. So you have a thought. The intention is there to book that, to pay attention to what you need to do to be able to get to that experience and then to actually experience it. So there's like a process that we go through. But the funny thing is, we can do that with certain things. And there's other things that we just absolutely refuse to do it with. And this is where I would like to focus today on, you know, what is the faith you have in in your own female intimate journey and your health? If someone was to approach you, somebody like myself, say, to approach you and say, look, I have this program for you or I have this coaching that could really help you to jump from this side of the fence to this side of the fence. Because on the left-hand side of the fence is where, let's say, the sickness and disease and dysfunction and stress lives. And on the right-hand side of the fence is where the optimising of the health lives, the freedom of movement lives, the pain-free life lives, you know, the the hope, the joy, this is where it lives. Which side of the fence would you want to be on? Because many of us say we do really well on living on stress, but we're not recognising the implications for what that actually means when we say that. So when we, as a female, 
So we're focusing on female feminine energy and, and female intimate health. We don't realise the implications of exaggerated extended periods of stress on our reproductive and intimate health. We're not recognising that, you know, on our sex organs and our reproductive organs and how it's showing up. We're not recognising that. So in my last show, I shared that researchers have found that by 2040, which is literally 16 and a quarter years, let's say, just under 16 and about just over 16 and a quarter years from now, that cancer would increase by 32%, diabetes by 49%, uh, depression and mental health issues would increase by 16%, heart failure by 92%, Alzheimer's by 45%. So these are all, like... These are all nutrition and lifestyle related diseases. And I think one of the things that's really interesting is that we talk about the menopause experience. Let's focus on the menopause experience first. It's the last big event to affect us as females. And it's the last major event to affect our pelvic floor. And that's where I, that's where my specialism and my focus has always been in the pelvis. It's like the centre of the scales. It's the balancer for what goes on above the the pelvis to what goes on below the pelvis it's the anchor it's the foundation of the trunk and it's the anchor for the legs so it it, it it plays a massive massive role in everything we do yet it is underrated now it's become a thing because people are realizing there's money in it but every part of you <laughs> there's money to be made that's the crazy thing but it's not about whether it's just about money to be made because I didn't jump on this bandwagon. My first book was published in 2005. People will tell you they were stopping me in the streets in the 90s. We were not having this conversation. The Institute of Chartered Physiotherapists told me in 2006 it was impossible to engage the pelvic floor through the vagina. That was what was happening in 2006. That conversation has changed. So there is what we're doing now, where we've moved into, as we've moved into more of a digital age and we've moved forward, People are looking to see where they can make money. And that's that's true. People, everything that's out there, someone's going to profit from it. But you have to remember that you profit too. Because for everything that is improved in your optimal health, your quality of life, therefore, is improved as a byproduct. Your relationship may be safe. Your productivity, your ability to be able to earn and to work is also protected. So there's an exchange that's all it is. It's an exchange. You get the information and the value you, and you get those things. Now, I've always said there are six rewards for your pelvic floor. So it's flatter abs, better shaped butt, better shaped thighs, improved posture. Dry nick is always great sex. Which one don't you want? So most of you will come along because it's either to do with loss of sexual feeling or it's to do with a weakness in the bladder or it's to do with a prolapse within the pelvis. Those are the things you'll normally come to see somebody about, some kind of pelvic pain or some kind of debilitation in the pelvis. So you come to get that. But just imagine you go to the shop and you want to pay for those things and then they send you away, flattening your abs, lifting your butt, making it look better, improving the, quanti- the contour of your thighs and improving your posture. They're the bonuses. So that's what you get. You get those extra bonuses. But that's the holistic approach that I've been taking since I met Paul Check in 2001. So this is something I've been doing with Paul, since, Paul Check since 2001. So this is 22 years. But before that, I was doing stuff that I, you know, but I didn't realise what I was doing. But I was doing stuff from the middle of the, from 92. So that puts me 92 to 2001. That's already nine years. Add that to the 22 years. That puts me at 30 years, right? But what's really interesting is there is a bigger thing at play here. So we're focusing on, with the menopause, the hot flushes, the brain fog, and those symptoms that are affecting our productivity, our performance, and a company's bottom line. But if we don't look at the hormonal changes that affect the digestive and detoxification system, then we run the risk of increasing that instances because we increase Blood pressure is something we have to worry about because that can increase the incidence of stroke. We have to worry about cardiovascular function because that can increase the 
the instance of heart disease. We have to worry about, obviously, about the quality of the food and nutrition for brain health, because that can increase us for Alzheimer's. So can you see where I'm going with this? It's the research that's been done has highlighted something. And so what we need to do is faith is the substance of things hoped for, not yet seen. So the hope is for all the money that you've put into your pension pot, for the future that you're looking forward to, is that it's a future that is one that's on, as I said, let's say it's the right side of the fence where optimal health lives, pain free lives, sickness and disease does not exist. So if researchers are saying that people at the age of 70 will be living with three or more chronic conditions and by the age of 85 will be living with um, five or more chronic conditions, then it's really down to us to give ourselves and say, right, this is in my future. I'm g- That's why I trademarked the physical pension plan investment program, which I need to start using as my umbrella again. Because it's about saying, well, do I want health for tomorrow? Or do I just want health for today? Because that's the difference. If we want the health for tomorrow, then we have to start to invest in it. We have to start putting in little planting things. So we do that by starting with the thoughts that are in our head, where our attention goes. And that's that's where the energy flows. So we need the, the energy to flow into the direction of optimal health. But that's hard if we start to say, I have, I have, I have, I am, I... And we say that, with regards to a sickness or a disease. I have diabetes. I have osteoporosis. I have multiple sclerosis. I have. So we we claim the label that's been put on us. But what we have to do is we have to look. As Paul would say, you've got to look at the six principles he has. I added a seventh, which is social interaction. I did that when we was in lockdown. And then I my eighth principle for me is pelvic health because that like I said is the foundation and I've I've made it a principle in its own right this is my opinion because it needs to be because it needs to be a highlighted one it's like you need to it needs a highlighter and you use a highlighter to obviously highlight things and it, it and what happens is the highlighter that's around our pelvis is called incontinence the highlighter that's around our pelvis is called prolapsed organs the highlighter that's around our pelvis is called pelvic pain the highlighter that's around our pelvis is called loss of sexual feeling or vaginal atrophy or vaginal dryness it's called all of those things that are uncomfortable that are debilitating that are robbing us as females of our quality of life that's the only highlighter that is on the pelvis. So a female has to suffer first before she's given a short-term fix. But if a female was to realise that there were things that she could do to actually have a different high and, and to highlight her pelvis for good with the bonuses, so let's say, let's focus on, everyone likes a bonus. And a, a really dear friend of mine years ago said, there's nothing wrong with a good bribe. So if, if you realise that if you focus on that centre and you highlight the pelvis and it starts to play a role in improving the shape and contour of your lower abdominals, let's say, or it, sh- it gives you the upside down heart shaped bottom that you're supposed to have, not the heart shape the right way up bottom that many women have. It improves the contour and shape of your thighs. Nobody doesn't want to have good legs, right? Nice but good legs. <laughs> And it improves your posture, the position from where all movement, intimate, sexual or otherwise, begins and ends. Then let's put that highlighter on the pelvis instead of the painful highlighter that we put on the pelvis that draws our attention to it in a debilitating way. Let's put the attention on it so that we can dress it nicely. And I don't mean in terms of the physical clothing, I just mean like mentally awarely. So that our confidence, our continence, our sexual satisfaction isn't compromised. Neither is our posture, our performance or our body shape. 
then suddenly we look at it through a different lens. And it becomes more interesting and it becomes more inspired to do something about it. And it's more intentional. And that's where we need to get to. We need to get to a place where we're intentional about what we're doing. And if our, if we have that thought and we're, then we're intentional, then our attention, we pay attention to what we're intentional about, then the experience that we'll have will be a different experience. And I believe, and I would love to, because I've always wanted to create a movement towards empowerment for women everywhere. And for me, that empowerment, that movement towards empowerment starts in the pelvis. It really does. So if we can create this movement towards empowerment by understanding our intimate health better and the implications for it, we are in a much better position. We understand the hormone conversation with the ovaries that impacts cardiovascular and brain health, pelvic and spinal stability, we will understand why it's really important for us to make nutrition and lifestyle changes first if we're experiencing uterine pain, um, poor menstrual experiences before we opt for hysterectomy. If we understand the nutrition and the pH balance within our digestive tract and with around our reproductive health, that's actually feeding things like fibroids. If we make nutritional changes that don't feed the fibroids, so they can't grow, so they can't cause the pain, and we decide that our health and everything that God places in us is much more precious to us than the donut or the cake or the sweet things that we like or the things that are feeding these things. Then we get to stay whole. We help to reduce the instance of cardiovascular disease. And so the, this, this, this research that says that heart failure will increase by 90 Two percent. I mean, pause and think about that. Ninety-two percent. If we can make a change to that, then we don't become part of the ninety-two percent. That means only eight percent of people are not going to have that issue. That's that's mad, right? That's mad. But if you look at the statistics for cardiovascular disease, it's one of the biggest killers, right? So we've got to look and think, well, what is it that we are doing that can make that difference? Now, the quality of our food plays a massive role in what's happening. And we are, you know, the electromagnetic fields, the levels of stress, which has an altered state for our thinking which then alters our breathing so thoughts and breath are the first two things that we have to be focused on because where is the energy flowing from the attention and what is that doing to the way in which we breathe because fear makes us do usually one of two things and that's to either hold the breath or hyperventilate and if we're holding the breath or hyperventilating, we run the risk of acidifying the body. And sicknesses and diseases love an environment that's quite acidic, that lacks oxygen. That's where they thrive. Cancers thrive in, in, in those things. Now, this is not to knock Macmillan and to knock what they're doing. But the adverts are out at the moment to remind us of the Mac Macmillan tea mornings. And you can have a tea morning. And that tea morning, it shows all the cakes and the biscuits and all the foods that are sugar rich that will help to feed the cancers that you want to get rid of. I just want to say that, that cancers love an environment that's rich in sugars and foods that really don't help it. We have got to recognise that we can still fuel this sickness just by what we put into our mouth. Or we can start to disintegrate the sickness just by what we put in our mouth. 
but we have to be aware of that because you can't catch cancer. It doesn't fly around in the air. So if it's not flying around in the air, then what have you got to do? What is it? What has happened to the environment within your body that has become so poor that is allowed that sickness or disease to start to announce itself? That's what we have to look at. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. Apples and pears, beef and skittles, cider with rosy, common or garden, ant and deck, fish and chips, mum and dad. UK Health Radio and Health Triangle Magazine. Each is good by itself, but enjoying both is always better. Kiss me quick. Add Health Triangle magazine to your monthly health regime. Check it out at ukhealthradio.com. A cancer diagnosis can be scary and stressful for everyone involved. Hello Love is a contemporary living space and well-being center in central London where anyone can come and learn about illness prevention and non-toxic practice. Inside, you will find a vegan restaurant, juice bar and holistic dojo that encourage lifestyle changes to help heal mind, body, and spirit connection. Cancer patients are offered free sessions. To find out more, please visit us at hellolove.org. UK Health Radio, the station that makes you feel good. But anyway, let's, let's, um, so that's food for thought to start with. And I'm hoping that when I share these things, I'm really hoping that it, you know, it's about making us really think because really, I think the one area of life that we should be taught in schools and we're not <laughs> is about how our bodies work and how we can make sure that we look after our bodies so that we don't end up just feeding someone else's bank account whilst we're taking all these pills because the pills aren't helping us in the long run where it's great. I was, I'm was i doing a talk next Thursday, by the way, with Leah Salmon and I will share that link with you shortly. And I'm sharing on pelvic health. But what's interesting is she made a statement. We was on Instagram Live the other day. I am Instagram at Pelvic Secrets. And, you know, people keep saying we're living longer. But as this person quoted, they said, we're not living longer. We're dying longer. And this is the thing. That research is saying that by the age of 70, people will be living with three or more chronic diseases. By the age of 85, you'll be living with five or more chronic diseases. So we are not living well. And, you know, one of my statements is to live life better. But you cannot say if you're on a cocktail of medication that you are living life better. You are popping pills to minimise the pain you're having. So you're experiencing disease and sickness. And you're choosing to live with the disease and sickness because somebody outside of yourself has told you that what you have, you have to live with. Let me just say that one more time. Someone outside of yourself has told you that what you have, you have to live with. So it's funny because we make decisions for our life based on what we want. But when we get sick... We accept decisions for our life based on our doctor's interpretation of what we've told him, how it aligns to what he's been taught and what he then tells you, that this is what you have, this is where you are and this is what you have to do. How about if we flip that script and we get told that this is where you are this is what this is where you will stay if you follow this direction but if you don't want to be here then this is what you need to do this is where medical and holistic needs to align 
But as long as you sit there and wait for science to prove it, you'll be in trouble. Because like I said, the experience is something that's not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, not yet seen. So when you book your holiday, you you don't book it, as I mentioned at the top of the show, thinking you're not going to experience it. So when you get sick, you don't accept the sickness and stay there thinking you'll never experience wellness again. You have to want to experience wellness enough for you to fight to have it. But how about if we were to flip that script, (laughs) flip that one instead, and how about if we said, I don't want to have to experience sickness before I fight to experience health. How about if you say, I like the health I have today and I want to always experience it. That would be a different conversation. That means the foods they sell us in the gift at our children in school would be different because we'd understand it's the nutrition that feeds the cells and the cells that need to be well that make us well. So there's, there, there are numerous, it's not just the foods, the cosmetics we're using. What is in the cosmetics that we're putting onto our skin, onto our lips, onto our face, that we're putting on, that little girls are putting on now from, you know, you're seeing girls. I belong to David Lloyd's. When I want to silk press my hair, that's a big job. <laughs> Natural hair. I do it in the gym. So I'm in the gym and next to me, there's a little girl. She must be five, six, and she's in the mirror and she's putting on eyeshadow and she's putting on lipstick. We've got girls 13, 14, and they're dressed up and they look like they're 18, 19. So, and we're putting all these cosmetics onto our children from a much earlier age. The skin is the biggest organ in the body and it absorbs toxins. It releases toxins, but absorbs it. When we get breakouts on the skin, it's the body's way of saying, and acne is the body way, body's way of saying that the environment we're in is too acidic. Think about, well, it depends on where your child goes to school. But if it's not a middle or upper class area, then the chances are that next to the school, along that strip around the corner, there's about 60 million chicken shops. And fast food chains, in junk masquerading as food, as we call it. And, and you know, if we've got this cost of living crisis that we're struggling with, then, you know, if you need to feed your children, what are they being fed? 99 pence for a box chicken and a bit of chips. That's what they're eating. There's no, there's no nutrition there. Because most of those proteins have been so processed and ultra-processed. And it's like the ultra-processed body is what is creating the ultra-processed outcomes of sickness and disease. That's the reason why researchers can feel confident that this is a position. So if this is a position by 2040, the question you have to ask yourself then is, who will be the biggest beneficiary of your sickness? And the answer is the pharmaceutical companies because they are preparing themselves for this explosion of sickness whilst we are sitting down and going, oh my God, fear setting in. I might get Alzheimer's. I might get cancer. I might, might, oh my heart. We start to prepare ourselves. We've got 24 hour TV, which helps us not to move. It helps us to sit in the same position for hours and hours. Then by doing that, we start to shorten the ligaments and tendons in our hip flexors. We start to adjust our posture. We start to adjust our pelvis. We start to maybe cause all sorts of problems. Or we're adjusting and shortening and desensitizing the bottom which then makes muscles within the pelvic floor become hyperactive because the actual muscles of the butt can't do their job properly. That's just whilst we're enjoying binge-watching 
she says, Criminal Minds. <laughs> that's my, my go to. So I've watched it before, but not all the seasons I've watched it all the way. I'm so bad. Anyway, I digress. But the point is, we're all, we're, we can all be to it. But all those hours I spend watching Criminal Minds, how many books could I have read? And we don't have to read, but if we don't read, we don't learn. And what we've got to get to the point is, now, it's not that we're not learning, it's that we're learning the hard way. Because the highlighter, as I mentioned, for the pelvis is one thing. The other sicknesses and diseases from the top to bottom are the other highlighters. Now, last week, I took young ladies and my son, we went to watch Barbie. We went to watch Barbie. Barbie is funny. I thought Barbie was funny. And there's all these little underlying innuendos. It was really good. And I loved when, I don't know what the name of the actress was. I don't follow actresses' names. But she's the one who created these realities inside of Barbie's heads with the, you know, the pink outfit she has on, if you haven't seen it yet. I don't want to ruin it. But what she mentioned was about women, you know, having to be these, the masculine energy that I was talking about. It's like we have to fight for everything. And so what happens is in our fights, we've got to, we want to be a badass in the boardroom. and want to be a badass in the bedroom, you know, but what's it costing us? Because we, we've got to be like a woman, but we need to be as aggressive as a man. And that's the male energy. So when I went and did this course the other day, it was really interesting because it was, I've been, I've been looking, I've been trying to work out, you know, I get asked these questions, do I feel like I intimidate men? And, and that actually really upsets me. And I'm like, why? Why would I... You know, I'm a girly girl. I love my tennis skirts. I love my little things. I love my full length dresses. I, you know, I like, I like girly stuff. It was in recent years, I'd say in the last 10, 12 years, 10, 15 years. And I'm 60 now. So probably in the last, maybe let's say last 20 years, I've worn jeans. I used to hate them. I never liked jeans. I wasn't really a trousers person. I love dresses and skirts and, you know, but, um, it was really interesting to get asked that question. And then I was playing tennis with this guy the f- two days after. And he just wasn't moving. So because he wasn't moving, they t- they t- my our opponents, he was my partner, our opponents kept hitting the balls at angles. I'm like, you know, move your feet. Cut the angle off. They know you're not moving. They know you can't move. So they're going to keep going there. So come on. You know, and he said, are you married? And I said, no, I'm a wife in waiting. And he said, oh, because... Otherwise, your husband would just say yes and do what you want him to do. And I was like, why? I, I just, even at social tennis, I don't want to just play and lose. We're losing because you're not moving. But it got me thinking, like, what is it? What, you know, as females I think I am, I'm quite assertive of my voice. And I used to teach classes, like 21 classes a week. We used to teach in massive sports halls. And we never had a microphone. So I had to project this voice. So I was trying to work it out. But I went on this course and they're talking about the relationship we have with ourselves, which I believe you can only have someone to love you to the degree in which you love yourself. I know that already. But I have to say, when I was younger, I went through a whole period of self-loathing. So, you know, as much as I know, for many women, we go through this period of not feeling we're good enough, not feeling we're worthy. And I went through all of that. But what was really interesting was they talked about, they, they used the analogy of using a, Tattinger Black Champagne. Nah, that's good champagne. And a bottle of Whispering Angel. A blush. So he was asking that any of us have anxiety or get angry easily or, you know, fear and all these different things. And he kept shaking this bottle of champagne. I said, what would happen? Obviously, if you took the lid off, it would explode. And that this is us. This is this energy that many women are walking around in this energy which is much more masculine and so really for us as females we should have like 70% female energy and 30% male energy and it's the other way around for men and it was like a light bulb moment because I feel like I've always had this fight you know I've covered classes before when I covered class for the deputy head of the YMCA at the time back at the end of beginning of the 90s Filippo 
fractured his ankle. He was off for four weeks. I went to the Shell Centre, which used to be there in Waterloo, and I was covering the class, and I walked in, and this guy said, who's taking the class? And I said, I am. He looked me in the face and said, this would be a laugh. Uh, in my breath, I thought, oh, I'm going to give you a laugh. You ain't never going to forget. <laughs> what I found out a year later when I tried to hire the Shell Centre was... Um, they said I couldn't hire it. Not that it wasn't for hire, but I, Jenny Russell, could not hire the Shell Centre. And I said, why? And they said, because when we wanted to keep you, you turned us down. Now, I went back to Barry Cronin, who was at the head of the YMCA at the time, Tottenham Court Road. And I asked him, I said, because I didn't turn them down. Barry Cronin turned them, turned me down f- on my behalf. Because they rang the YMCA after the four weeks when it was, this will be a laugh, four weeks before, and said, we don't want Filippo back. They want to keep the girl. And he said, oh, no, she works full time. She can't do it. Now, I was working at the time, but I covered it for four weeks. So why couldn't I go every week and do it? I did it for four weeks. And one of the things we had when we first qualified at the YMCA was that we got to use the gym and and the membership in exchange for doing free classes. So that's what we did. But that's the day I left the YMCA. I've had to always fight. My son's father left when I was pregnant. So the fight has been there for me all the time. You know, I was like, well, if you don't want to be involved, don't, don't, don't be involved. You know, I'll do it myself. But I'm saying words and I'm realising how much power's behind the words I'm saying. And I'm feeling like I'm okay and I'm out and I'm teaching classes and I'm on the stage and I'm, it's like a performer without the notoriety, so to speak. Although, with pelvic floor, like I said, from the 90s, I used to get stopped in the street in Wood Green or go to a party and I'd be stopped and say, you got to help me, you got to help me, I'm letting my husband down. And I'm like, yeah, we're out raving or I'm out shopping. Like, not right now, you know? And so I feel that this, as feminine as I as I appear, and also when I used to do Ultra Fit, you know, I was in the Ultrafit magazine and it was like, oh my God, Jenny's back's bolder than most men. Look at Jenny's muscles in her back. I've got a picture on on um, Instagram. I'll, I'll post it again so you can see it. Just this picture of when I was doing Ultrafit. I didn't know my back looked like that because who can see their back? This lady took a picture and gave it to me years later. If I'd known, I'd have done Miss Physique. But anyway, <laughs> the point is all of those things you know, teaching these classes, 50 press-ups, my speed, my count. Mm -hmm. It was very masculine. And so that's why guys used to say, when I get fit, I'm going to come, I'm going to tame you. And I used to think, I'm not a wild animal. Why are you saying this stuff to me? And I didn't realise that I was operating in this masculine energy. And I told my friend and he said, well, I've been saying sometimes you sound a bit aggressive in your tone. And I'm like, no, I'm not aggressive. But that's a masculine trait. So it's a, so for me, it's a work in progress to actually, but to be aware, I said to my pastor, I said to a few of my my friends, my male friends, like, you know, just like open your hand and just sort of put it on my shoulder and go, just look at me and I'll just ease back. And I'm thinking, even with the radio show, does it mean if I, I can change my, my approach or the way in which I say something so that the message is received in a different way. Because I remember this girl Ashley saying to me when we was younger and I teach at the women's gym, she's like, you know, when you used to teach, I didn't like you. I didn't like you. You just seemed so harsh, but you knew what you were doing and your classes were fantastic. So you know, at first we're like, oh, don't really like her, don't really like her, but just going to keep going to her class. And a lot of that stuff when I was younger, I just went, oh, okay, fine, no worries. <laughs> you know, I just respect the fact you're coming to my class, thanks a lot. It's weird. It's weird, but I never paid attention to that stuff when I was younger, now sassy, sexy, 60, finally paying attention. My goodness gracious me. But they always do say, better late than never. Better Late than never. <laughs> Let's play the last trial before the show runs up. Good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. 
the station that makes you feel good. So we are into the last 10 minutes of the show. And, um, you know, it's been interesting to share these bits and pieces with you. It is a it is a journey. I think the female journey is a really interesting one. I f- you know, obviously we we have incubators. Our uterus is an incubator. We have the ability to take in. So we receive from men, right? We receive from men and that reception that we get has the ability to create new life. Then we bring new life into this world and then the, the, pri- the process goes around and around. The journey to bringing that new life into the world is a very, very challenging one because we have to be able to, and we're not taught this, right, manage our emotions because what we feed our child isn't just the physical food, it's also the emotional one. And that's the biggest one. Whatever stresses and pressures and or otherwise, our child will take that in. They'll take in the hurts, the angers, the disappointment. They'll they'll take that in. They take all of that in. And so then we come up with this child who may, you know, by the time they become our terrible twos, as you call it, may start to act out and do all these things because it's based on the environment that they've experienced inside the sack they've been growing in which is within our uterus. And we don't realise this. So we have a lot, you know, there's a lot of pressure on us as females. And then there's, as I said, when I was pregnant with my son, I'd taken 25 people to Barbados. So four days before we were going to Barbados, I found out I was pregnant. But I was there for six weeks. They were there for two. Two, two weeks? Yeah, two weeks. When I came back, I had to mention it to, as I said, 21 classes I was teaching. So I told these ladies, you know, that I'm pregnant. One of the ladies in the class came to me at the end of the class and said to me, my incentive, Jenny, to train is to watch you get fat, ugly and out of shape. Yes, that's what she said to me. And I think I was so shocked at the end. It was a great class. I was so shocked at the end. And I was like, I was like, okay, no problem. But watch me when I come back. That was a statement I made. So I said, watch me when I come back. And I was like a sort of beefy size 12 before I got pregnant. But I was always a small girl before, as a teenager. And within six weeks of having my son, I was a size six. I just had 38 <laughs> in chest. And a size six. My body was like, right? Um, so there's now a, a size eight, eight, ten. Um, but a smaller ten, more of an eight. And it was just really, really interesting. She came to the class when I returned seven weeks later. And she never came back after that day. That's the power. But I'm saying all that to say this. Imagine we've got enough stresses with with relationships, with performance at work, with productivity. We don't know what our pregnancy and labour experience is going to be like. We don't know how well we're going to bond with our child. We don't know how well our intimacy is going to be. But we've got to, we've got to bounce back. We've got to get back to being a badass in the boardroom and saving our position at work. So some hot totty has been doing our job for us. And we have the worry of whether or not she's doing it better than we did when we return. We have to worry about, you know, our physical appearance and whether it's going to pop back in. And that's why they've got all these quick fixes, you know, do your boobs, do your bum, do whatever. We've got we've got so many things that we have to worry about, which is really sad. Mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually nutritionally, hormonally, bonding with our child, returning to intimacy, returning to work, how society is seeing us, what's happening, is my hair growing, is my hair falling out? All these different things are happening. Some women, it affects their teeth. You know, some women end up with gestational diabetes and then they end up with diabetes. There's so much for us as females to to consider. 
So this is why we have to consider our body. And this is why it should be a subject on the curriculum that is that is not just taught to us as females, but it's also taught to, to males. We need to understand the male body too. We need to understand each other better so that will improve our relationships. So that when we're going through seasons of discomfort or disease or menstrual issue or an erectile issue or whatever, we know how to support each other, not take the mickey out of each other. That's what needs to happen. And once we can get to that point, then we are really, really, really in a much better place. Now, I have come to the end of the show, so I just want to share this with you. I'm doing a talk, like I said, the Natural You Coach presents Pelvic Floor Secrets for Over 40s. So I'm doing a talk. This is myself. It's a virtual talk between 7 and 9 on the 17th of August, which is next Thursday. And it'll be a great talk. If you would like to book your ticket, then all you need to do is go to TicketTaylor.com. As in Taylor, the Taylor, T-A-I-L-O-R. Go to TicketTaylor.com. The tickets are merely four, £10. Sorry, I was going to say £40. They're merely £10. So you're really going to be able to understand the pelvic floor effects on your menopause, posture, performance and body shape. Understand how emotions trap themselves in the pelvis and what that means for your intimate health and relationships and why your digestive and eliminatory systems affect your pelvic floor and what that means for your health and the two biggest cancer killers which is cervical and uterine for women, and much more. So if you'd like to be able to get that information, then go to TicketTaylor.com. It only costs you £10. Once you've registered your interest and registered for that link, wherever you are in the world, remember, you can still have the playback, but you just need to register first. But if you also would like to do any coaching with me and work one-to-one, then those that coaching program is available for you if it's neutral nutritional lifestyle or the gold service or the platinum service i am there to help you help yourself you can send me an email pelvic secrets at icloud.com that is p-e-l-v-i-c s-e-c-r-e-t-s at icloud.com you can find me on linkedin jenny russell.com Sorry, Jenny Russell, even, <laughs> and Facebook. And you can also find me on Instagram, more than this, what's well, called X now, isn't it? Which is at Pelvic Secrets. But until next week, where I'll be talking to the wonderful Chloe, you'll be listening to her next week, in health and happiness. I hope to see you online on the 17th. Stay blessed, stay well. Definitely stay safe.